Hello, and welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for following me as I explore the wide world of pens. And there are a few places where fountain pens are still well used. And one of those countries is India. And I've had a few pens from India, and I've been very pleased with most of them. I saw this, it was either Instagram or Facebook. Eh, you get bombarded with a lot of ads. And I thought the pen looked interesting. So I went on the website and purchased it. And I thought that the price and delivery was came out pretty good. The price was $45 for the pen plus 15 shipping. And in the world that we're living in now, um, especially from India, uh, shipping has gotten expensive. I'm certain many people have talked about that. I've seen it on uh, the various channels. So it was, it was wrapped well, but it was wrapped by hand in this package. And it was just, uh, you know, a bunch of cardboard, uh, some bubble wrap. And then inside the bubble wrap was this nice package containing the pen. You know, this sleeve just slides off, and you'll see a recognizable method of keeping a pen with this uh, plastic that really holds it well in place. You know, we have the name of the maker here. Interesting uh, mirror finish there. And this just opens up. You can see it says push, so you push. And it opens up. And we see a really classic design of a black, highly polished ebonite pen. And I really love the way they put the name here at the end of the barrel. Just a nice little subtle uh, reminder. It's a standard clip, but also the finial at the top has uh, that iconic design. Queen from the chessboard. Feels good in the hand. It's ebonite. It's polished ebonite. The cap comes off in a little over one and a half turns, which is just about optimal. And we'll see a nice beefy section and a very nice number six broad nib. Again, branded with that logo and the name of the company and B for broad. So that's Always nice when the nib is labeled. And as one would expect, it feels good in the hand. That section is just about perfect. You don't feel those threads. There's, there's hardly any step up there. So it's good sized. And if you look at that taper and you look at the cap, you would say that that should post pretty good. And it posts on the high side. Makes for a long pen, but it's also not very secure. But if you need to put the cap at the end of the barrel when you're right, you can do that. And it will work. I generally don't do that. I'm generally writing at my desk, and so the cap just sits on my desk usually like that. And in this case, I get to admire that nice logo in the top of the cap. Well, inside the package that had the Vizier pen was this very interesting face mask. It has that queen symbol icon, a nice hand holding a fountain pen. So I'm impressed and I almost threw away the package before I found this in the package. I've learned over time that you need to totally tear a package apart, not just remove the pen that may be wrapped up in the package. So this pen completely disassembles, which to me is a good thing because it facilitates any cleaning that you might want to do, changing inks. You know, after a month or so of use, it's always good to thoroughly clean the pen. So there is a nib collar here. And we have your ubiquitous injection mold plastic feed. We have a nice number six Looks like a chrome nib, or it could be a polished stainless steel nib. The converter, 
is branded Schmidt and it pulls all apart this collar unscrews from uh, this uh, <clears throat> tube and it's also nice that it has that metal band with a nice uh, insert there so it seals up well and it fits well into the back of this nib assembly you can see that design and I think this is a, a great secure way of attaching the converter to that nib collar everything is is very well done fit and finish is nice the top finial unscrews easily so the clip can be removed and if you needed to clean out the inside from any ink in there then it's easy to do so when I reassemble this I'll put silicone grease on all of the the major threads silicone grease the converter you know I just kind of like do a little bit of an extra thing I've already cleaned the nib and feed so we're going to reassemble it find a suitable ink and see how that broad nib writes stay tuned I thought I would put the Vizier in perspective with some other Indian pens and also as a frame of reference a Pilot Metropolitan so this is the Kiwi pens it's a Ranga, I think, Model 3. This is another Ranga. This is a Canwright pen. And again, the Metropolitan. So uh, Indian pens, uh, many of them are known for their large size, and, and I appreciate that, and I enjoy them. Uh, these three are ebonite. This is an acrylic, but a matte finish, which I just find wonderful. Here's a matte finish, acrylic and green. This is a polished acrylic and a nice brown ripple. And of course here we have like a coral acrylic. This is a piston filler. These are all cartridge converters. So there's a wide range of pens available from uh, many Indian pen manufacturers. And lately I've been extremely pleased with the quality of their pens, the variety of nibs. They're doing a great job. So posted, these pens can be very, very long. They Kiwi pen is extremely long and they don't these three don't post well but again you can put the cap there this one posts a little bit better and the cam right piston filler posts the best of the lot you can see from the size these all have number six size nibs which are quite nice some of them have Bach nibs and of course the lowly pilot metropolitan is there for comparison viewpoints. Let's just zero in real quick on this section and nib. So all the sections are very comfortable. You can see some Bach two-tone nibs. Uh, flex nib here in the can right. The Kiwi pen has a nice uh, ground uh, cursive italic which I've enjoyed uh, since I got the pen. And we have the Vizier here. They're all nice nibs. They're all nice, impressive nibs. And these, some of these are uh, Indian nibs and some are German nibs. And they usually give you choices when you, you buy their pens as to what nib you would like to use. One of my viewers mentioned that they used a Bach nib assembly design for the Vizier. And as you can see, it looks like it is the same. The distance here between the end of the threads and where this ridges on the nib collar is a little bit longer but here's the section from the Vizier and as we expect the Bach nib assembly screws in and seems to seal up pretty good so that gives you a lot of options for those of you that might have some Bach nibs maybe a titanium one that you can swap them in and out and as we know, the feed pulls out very easily on both of these, so therefore you can just swap nibs, or if you have spare Bach nib collars, you can just unscrew them in and out. So why did I decide to buy this pen? Well, as I mentioned, I saw an ad. I really like the way the pen looked in the ad. So I went on to the website. I found this pen. It's the Vizier Black flat top and they really provide you with a lot of information you got a decent amount of nib choices 
And also, when I was uh, perusing the website, they make a round-ended version of this pen in ebonite. It comes in red, which really looks nice. I just wanted a classic black pen, so that's why I have this one. There's also uh, a yellow pen that's very interesting on the website. They also have some acrylic uh, resin pens, so there's a lot to choose from. And I would say uh, in the um, Indian pen that I have, this pen is as good as any. In fact, it's superior in, in many ways, and the price is just excellent. I love the attention to detail, you know, the way the name is just subtly engraved at the end of the barrel, that nice chess piece at the top of the cap, again, their symbol. It's, it's a classic design, classic pen, and a pen that I will enjoy writing with for a long time. What ink to put in? Now, well, this may not have been your first choice, but it was mine. Because I expected that broad nib to really handle this ink well. And this is a, a nice kind of a light turquoise color. You know, the chromatography shows it to be a pretty clean color. And there's some uh, water resistance there for those that might be interested. So let's put nib to paper and put some of this copper chloride ink and make some notations. So it's always good to review what you've filmed so far. So I haven't talked about this clip. It's a nice, again, classic design, triangular shaped with a nice uh, ball end here. And it's nice and springy, which I think is great because it'll go over some thick fabric with ease. It'll go over thin fabric with ease and really function as a clip should, in my view. Is this finish absolutely perfect? It's pretty close to perfect. You don't really feel that seam up here. The ends of the caps are nice and rounded, so you don't feel that. Again, ebonite like this, polished ebonite, just feels excellent in the hand. It is really a phenomenal material to use to make pens with. And this is a perfect shape and design. It's a pretty good hourglass shape here. We'll give you the dimensions of the section. Those threads you don't feel and that step up you don't feel. So you can hold it wherever you want. But I think with that number six nib, that's a perfect position for me to hold the pen. Plenty long enough to fit in the hand. We'll give you all the dimensions and we'll give you the weights. And as I mentioned, it does post, but it makes a very long pen, over seven inches. And it's not a pen I would generally post, and it doesn't post securely, but again, it's a place to put the cap if that's what you want. So let's see how that broad nib puts down that copper chloride ink. So overall, I like the nib. It has a little bit of bite and feedback to it, which might be okay for some. And I do have a little bit of a heavy hand. So this is a, a nib I would definitely do a little smoothing on. So let's do that now. So I use this nail board, which has been fairly well used. This is the coarse side, medium side. So this side is split into two pieces. You flip it over and this side is the smoothing side, which is a fairly uh, much of a polishing side. So because this is a little bit toothy, I'm going to do some, you know, some figure eights here. 
And while I'm doing that, I rotate the nib a little bit, do some ups and downs, some backwards. And I'll do the same type of thing on the medium side. And immediately I can feel that the nib is doing better. I'll flip it over and do the same type of movement on the smoothing side with just a little bit of pressure. I used a little bit more pressure when I wanted to remove some tipping material. So let's see how that nib writes now. So after smoothing, there's still feedback, but there's no sharpness to the nib, which is great. And the flow has actually increased because I think there was a slight bit of baby's bottom, not significant. And maybe most people wouldn't notice. So the horizontal strokes are more on the medium side. The vertical strokes are a little wider. And if you put a little pressure on, it opens up a little bit, but it's a fairly stiff nib, so it's not something you're going to be doing on a regular basis. So let's rate this pen. And I'm going to give it a 9.7. It gets two checks for the build design, the look, and it gets one check for the nib. And I did do a little bit of smoothing, but it's still a very nice nib. And it gets one check because it's a beautiful black pen for those that really love their black pens. So overall, I'm extremely, extremely happy with this pen. I think it is, is exceptionally good price. It's a, it's a great value for what it is. You know, ebonite, a beautiful ebonite. Uh, ergonomically, it's, it's excellent. It's on the large side, so you'd have to like a large nib. But this section is just about perfect. So even though the pen might be large, the section is right where it should be. In my hand, it feels great. So this is a pen I would definitely recommend that you check out if, if you're interested in a pen like this. Delivery was quick. A lot of communications. You know, the company is very... Uh, customer focused which is, is always a nice thing when you're spending some money for something like this that you're going to treasure and value we're coming to the end so thank you very much for watching and this pen starts up first time every time it uh, doesn't have any drying out and i've been using it for over a week now so that's uh, the scoop hook this video finds you safe, healthy, and happy, enjoying your pens, enjoying putting ink on paper, maybe sharing thoughts, maybe thoughts to read later, maybe thoughts for your descendants to read at a future time. This is the end. And we're going to say bye. And those that have watched my preview video knows there's a lot of videos to come. I'm working as fast as I can.